Hello students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 24 and we're in the second last section of the Organic Chemistry module. Now we're going to start comparing some of the properties of a few of the other organic groups that we haven't looked at in very much detail up to this point. So in this particular video we're going to focus on the structural formulae, properties and functional groups associated with the alcohols, primary, secondary and tertiary the aldehydes, the ketones, the amines, the amides, and the carboxylic acids. So this is a large scope. What I'm going to do to try and cope with all of these particular groups is to put them in two different comparison tables and just talk through them uh, for you. Obviously, we want to uh, go into some of these groups in a little bit more detail, so comparing the properties between the alcohols is something we've started to have a look at. But then these groups we haven't looked at in much detail before, the aldehydes, the ketones, amines, amides, and carboxylic acids. So the key to this is to think about each of the functional groups that's associated with, with each homologous series, how that might affect the chemical and physical properties, and certainly how it might affect the interactions um, within a group and across different groups. So let's have a look and see what we can find. So the first group we want to have a look at are the alcohols and the alkanals. So this is the um, primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols and an aldehyde. And one of the things that I've done is to give you a number of examples of each of these where the molar mass of the substance is pretty similar. So when you're comparing each of these substances in terms of the structural formula and the uh, functional group, then what you need to do is you need to try and remove some of the variables. Whenever we're trying to analyze things, we want to make sure that we're not trying to analyze differences based on too many variables. So one of those very important variables is mass and what happens as the length of the chain increases. When we studied alcohols and also when we studied the hydrocarbons, we saw that there was a, certainly a difference in properties such as melting and boiling point when we increased the number of carbons in the chain. It also changed when we changed the orientation of the chain to, to go from something that was linear or very long uh, to something that was more branching uh, and more compact. So this does change the way that this dispersion forces in particular interact between uh, two hydrocarbon chains and it also is going to affect things like the um, physical properties like melting and boiling point. So if we can control for that, that is if we can remove mass or length of chain as a factor, it, are there other things that we can look at in order to try and determine whether or not there are any changes? As I've mentioned before, I think one of the ways of testing some of these um, learning outcomes is to give you some data and see if you can identify any trends and or explain any differences between those. So here are four compounds. Butanol is a primary alcohol, and you can see that because the functional group, the OH group, is located on an end carbon. Butan-2-ol is a secondary alcohol. Here, the hydroxyl functional group is coming off a uh, middle carbon, so a carbon is attached to two other carbons. And in methylpropanol, whilst it doesn't have four carbons in the main chain, it has four carbons altogether, so it's just another isomer of the previous two alcohols. But now, the OH group is attached to a carbon that's also attached to three other carbons, and hence it is a tertiary alcohol. So the first thing that we notice when we start to analyze these is our primary alcohol has a boiling point of 117.7, our secondary 99.5, and our tertiary 82.6. So as a trend, you can see already, we've got a trend of boiling points decreasing. Now, why are they decreasing? Well, we know that there is going to be some covalent bonding within the molecules. We also know that there's some polarity uh, around or associated with the OH group 
and therefore there are going to be dipole-dipole interactions and specifically uh, we're going to have hydrogen bonding that's going to occur between the hydroxyl groups of adjacent molecules. The strength of the attraction between those is what's going to hold them together and require additional energy for them to be uh, separated from one another, which is what needs to happen for them to move from a liquid state into a gas state. The fact that the OH groups are becoming more and more hidden, so are uh, less easily accessed, as we go from the secondary to the tertiary alcohol, reduces that impact of those hydrogen bonds. And hence, we uh, experience a, a drop in the boiling points, a lowering in the, in the uh, attractive forces between the molecules as we go from primary to secondary to tertiary. But you can see that the trend of boiling points is actually continuing to an even lower boiling point for the aldehyde. So why is that? Well, the only difference now is that the functional group is this double bonded oxygen. So the double bonded oxygen to the carbon creates again some polarity, a slight negative charge for the oxygen and a slight positive charge for the carbon. Now, when two butanol molecules come close to one another, we do have a dipole, dipole interaction, but it's not a hydrogen bond. And we know that the hydrogen bonds are slightly stronger and require more energy to separate than the dipole-dipole interactions. And that's what we have in this uh, molecule of butanol. So, um, in comparing, you can see that there's not very much difference in the molar mass of butanol with, uh, in comparison to the three um, alcohols. So it's not mass that's creating a difference here. The only thing that must be lowering this bowl, boiling point is this dipole-dipole interaction, which is slightly weaker than the corresponding hydrogen bonding that's occurring in butanol. So think about these two as being uh, quite usefully compared because every other part of them is identical. The only difference is the single bonded oxygen, single bonded hydrogen on the end of the primary alcohol and the double bonded oxygen on the end of the aldehyde. So what's happening with the uh, other functional groups? Well, unfortunately, it's hard to fit all of these on the same slide and so therefore it's hard to make comparisons. And just as we compared the uh, aldehyde with the primary alcohol, the ketone is probably best compared with a uh, secondary alcohol because what we're looking at again is the fact that the uh, the OH group was on a central carbon rather than an end carbon and for the ketones the double bonded oxygen is on a central carbon and not on an end carbon. So again the, we're comparing things that are a little more similar to one another to see what the differences are. Once again uh, when we make those comparisons we find a lower boiling point for the ketone and we can explain this again with a dipole-dipole interaction. And that is creating less of a uh, attractive force between the molecules than the hydrogen bonding does. If we now look at our three remaining groups, and again you can see I've picked ones that are very similar in terms of their molar mass. The main difference here is again we're looking at the functional groups. So when we compare each of these functional groups, the butan-2-one has the double bonded oxygen on the central carbon. Propanoic acid has its functional group, the C-double-O-H functional group, on an end carbon. So again, it's probably easier comparing something like this um, to either a butanol or to um, butan-1-ol. So these would have the same mass, not the same length of carbon chain, but the same mass, um, but they would have a difference in, again, the functional group. Now the thing with the carboxylic acids is you can see we've gone to quite a high boiling point. So that means that the increase in the amount of energy that's required needs to be explained in some way. And what you'll notice here is that we've got a combination of the aldehyde 
and the alcohol functional groups to create the carboxylic acid. So what applied to them applies here only more so. So now we have dipole-dipole interactions that can potentially occur with that um, double bonded oxygen. But we've also got hydrogen bonding that can occur not just between the hydroxyl groups, but also between those hydroxyl groups and that double bonded oxygen. So the fact that it is a slightly negative charge means it still can attract a hydrogen from an adjacent molecule. This creates a lot of additional strength. We know that there are also some interesting properties of, of acids, uh, such as the bronsted lowry definition, that they are proton donors, and the proton that would be donated is from the hydrogen that's attached to the uh, hydroxyl group here. So there are some chemical differences between these as well, and of course I can't go into all of the differences because this, this particular video would go on forever. Um, but at least if we focus on each of these functional groups, we compare them with probably the most uh, simple physical property for us to analyze, which is boiling point, which is moving from substances which are relatively close together to molecules that are a long way apart. It gives us a little bit of an idea of how we might explain each of these. Now up till this point, we focused on molecules which have just carbon and hydrogen or carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So our last two groups, our amine and our amide, are groups that contain nitrogen. And how does nitrogen influence the way each of these behave? We can see in quite an interesting and very different kind of a way. When we look at the, um, the amine, which is an NH2 group attached to our four carbon chain, so butanamine, uh, you can see again the molar mass is around the same as it has been for all of our other groups, but again we have quite a low relatively speaking, boiling point. So why is this boiling point a little lower? Well, once again, this time if we circle our functional group, the amine group are a, a nitrogen attached to a carbon somewhere. So it's this um, attachment here that's very important. And we can have uh, different groups coming off our uh, nitrogen. But for the simplest uh, version of amines, which is the one that we've got here, we can see that there is going to again be some polarity. So we've got some polar covalent bonds, and those polar covalent bonds are between carbon and nitrogen, and also between nitrogen and hydrogen. There are dipole dipole interactions that are occurring here, um, but obviously. Um, a, being able to attract the carbon and the nitrogen a little bit more protected in some ways in this particular molecule, not as easy to create these dipole-dipole uh, interactions. And therefore, whilst they are present, and certainly our amines have a much higher boiling point than corresponding hydrocarbons, uh, they aren't as high as our alcohols, for example. The final group to look at is the one with this massively high boiling point. So propanamide is again a substance which is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen and has a molar mass very similar to all the other compounds that we've been looking at. The difference here is the functional group is this C double bonded O to the N. Now the C double bonded O we've already looked at as having uh, quite strong polarity. And that polarity is reinforced um, between the carbon and the nitrogen. So again, we have the possibility of dipole-dipole interactions occurring between adjacent molecules. The increased strength that occurs for a particular molecule like this, and the fact that it only has three carbons as opposed to four, does make a difference. But the fact that it has this double bonded oxygen plus the polarity of bonding between carbon and nitrogen, and also, of course, nitrogen and hydrogen, means that we have um, a number of different places where dipole-dipole interactions and potentially hydrogen bonding as well can occur. The increased interactions between the molecules increases the amount of energy that needs to be input in order to move these molecules apart from one another, which is what we need to do in the transition from a liquid to a gas. I think it's very important that you have a look at each of these functional groups, 
we will look at some of the chemical interactions between each of these and to be aware of the fact that some of our important rules when we're looking between groups is things like solubility. And if we remember for things like solubility, our general rule of like dissolves like, we'll be able to make some good conclusions, some sensible logical conclusions about which of these substances may be more or less likely to dissolve or to be miscible with other substances in the liquid phase. Uh, have a look at each of these groups and a few more examples, particularly look at um, properties where you are asked to explain trends because I think that's going to be one of the key things to take away from this section uh, of our study of organic chemistry. Thank you for watching.